Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, and just to say, I mean, very close. I was a terrible goalkeeper for Birmingham City when they were much better than they are now. Uh, unless you're watching online, then you guys are doing really, really great. <laughs> keep, keep going. Um, but my name is Jodie, and it is great to be here with you guys this morning. And it's mad hearing Joe's story, in all honesty, because it was five years ago that I was on an Alpha course myself. I didn't grow up around the church. My parents aren't Christians. And I was invited. I was living in New Zealand, playing some football, doing some work, and I was invited by a friend to come and to try church and to try Alpha. And I'd never set foot in church in my life. And much like Joe, I came, I explored, I asked my questions. And by the end of it, I was like, well, what have I got to lose? And, uh, and don't worry, if you're considering coming along to Alpha, they won't make you preach, at least not at the start anyway. Um, and hopefully it'll just be a good time. You'll make some friends, eat some great food, and who knows what God could do. And so this week, we are continuing on in our series of Jonah. And if you missed Stephen's talk last week, I'd recommend going back, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you find your talks, and listen on that. But by way of a short introduction, really, Jonah is a subversive story of a rebellious prophet who hates God for loving his enemies. And Jonah has been called by God to go and preach to the city of Nineveh. But instead, he runs away. He goes in the opposite direction. He turns his back on God and finds himself on a ship trying to escape from God. Good luck with that, bruv. <laughs> but in this moment, a huge storm rises up and he's thrown into the depths of the ocean with seemingly no hope of rescue, no hope of a second chance. And that is where we pick up the story today. So in chapter 2, we hear the honest prayer of a drowning man in the belly of a fish. And what do we do? What do you do? What do I do when we are in the pit or in those times where God feels a million miles away? And in times of our lives, particularly in our faith, it's not unusual that God can feel far. I'm aware that it's early in the morning to be getting existential with me, but are you ready for that? <laughs> And so today, I want to talk about what do we do when we feel down and God feels far? In any relationship, there's times of feeling close and there's times of feeling far away. And a friend of mine, a new friend, started coming to church over Easter weekend. And we prayed to God, God, if you're real, would you show a sign and sure enough, he did, and in the form of a double rainbow, is this beautiful moment, and my friend was like, great, I think God is real. And then on Easter Sunday, she came to church, and she was handed a bunch of flowers at the end. And then there was significant breakthrough in her job, and where there seemingly was no hope, it was looking up after so long. And so she was like, what is this Christian thing? Is it always rainbows and flowers and good jobs <laughs> and new things? And sometimes it is. Sometimes life with Jesus is beautiful. It's like nothing I've ever experienced, and I would never trade it in for anything else. And sometimes it literally is promises with rainbows. It's breakthroughs. It's flowers in meadows. It's peace that surpasses all understanding, a deep, deep-rooted joy that makes no sense to the world, and a love that is better than even that of Disney. But also, sometimes life is hard. Rubbish stuff still happens. And if you're here today, you're exploring faith, maybe a friend's told you, come along. This will make it all better. Uh, and you'll become immune to the hard stuff of life. Then, I'm sorry to say, your, your mate owes you an apology and probably a couple of pints. <laughs> because as amazing as God is, for now, we're still all vulnerable to the hard knocks of life. But the good news is that the Bible has a framework for the hard stuff. It's not just a self-help book which is only positive and hides away from the difficult. But if you've been following Jesus for any length of time, you probably figured this out and you don't need me to tell you this. But when I first came to faith, I went through a really hard time. And I was told over and over again, like, don't worry, God is with you. And I kind of was beginning to believe it, but he didn't really feel that close to me. 
And it's important to say that we don't always feel God. That's the journey of faith. It's trusting that God is, in fact, with us. He's living inside of us by his Holy Spirit. It's learning about the character of Jesus and trusting in his unwavering character. And so it's okay if you're here and you're like, I don't always feel it. And I don't get it, but sometimes, for some unknown mystery, sometimes God does in fact feel far from us when we're at the very ends of ourselves. And it can be a really uncomfortable thing. But I think Jonah's prayer offers us wonderful hope, as well as a few practical ways that we can pray. So in this passage, Jonah finds himself at an all-time low. He's so far from God, he couldn't go any lower, and he couldn't make his way back on his own. He's as far away as he could get. He's been drowning in the ocean, he's expecting to die, and then suddenly, he's swallowed by a fish. And he's initially not sure whether the fish is there to save him or to eat him. Is this the end? Is this how I die in the belly of a fish? Gross stuff surrounding me. What a way to go. And we learn that he's in the belly of Sheol, the place where dead go. It's associated with darkness and silence and a place of descent, abandon, the pit. He is in a desperate place. And we see throughout the book of Jonah that Jonah is on like a downwards spiral. We see that he goes down to Joppa. He goes down into the cabin of the boat. And he goes down into the depths of the sea. Jonah was down. And it looked like he was out. But in the face of death itself, then and only then, he decided to remember God. And maybe you're here today, this morning, and you would find yourself in the belly of the fish. You're facing an impossible situation. Maybe there's hurt in your life. Maybe you're supporting someone who is. Maybe you're managing to put on a brave face, but really, if you're honest with yourself, you're in a really hard place. And honestly, this has been me over the last few months. I lost a friend, I've moved cities, trying to navigate the ways of life, and it's been hard. Or maybe you're here today and you are having a fantastic time, and life is going so well for you right now. And then maybe just write some notes and keep them for a later date, because you'll all know better than me, life is wonderful and beautiful, but also it's really tricky sometimes. And so when we look at the prayer, I thought I'd offer four things that we can take away from Jonah and that we can try when God is feeling far or when we are in the belly of the fish. So the first one is to speak out. Jonah was in the belly of the fish, no further could he fall, and yet he chooses to speak to God, to pray, to be honest. Verses one and two, it says, from inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help and you listened to my cry. Whatever you are facing, whatever struggles you're facing, take time to be honest to God, to cry out to him. God listens and he answers Jonah's cry and he will do the same for us too. We need to speak honestly with God. Psalm 145 says, God is near to all those who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Speak to him, be honest, he can handle it all. The British politeness, the gentle prayers, the words we can barely get out, the requests, even the anger. Call on him in truth. He's near to us. He knows. He gets it. But also he loves it when we're honest with him. He loves our honest doubts and our honest questions. This is why we're doing Alpha. It's a space for those who are exploring or have doubts or questions. A a place to come and be like, well, where is God in all of this suffering? I think this is a load of rubbish with no judgment at all. And for Jonah, it took him too long to realize that prayer isn't the last thing that you can do, but it's the only thing you can do. We cry out, God listens, he hears, he answers. And also we need to be able to speak out with one another. 
It might seem weird if you're sat next to someone who you don't yet know, but we're here together as a church to be that people that we can speak to. Sometimes when we're at the depths of our lives, God uses other people to answer our prayers. Now, I don't know about you, but I lose my belongings all the time. Like, all the time. Actually, you couldn't even tell you where my phone is right now. Who knows where that's gone? If you find it, keep it, sure. (laughs) But I once was in a crowd of a few thousand people, and surprise, surprise, I managed to lose my phone. And it wasn't for about 40 minutes afterwards where I was walking that I kind of did one of those checks, and you're checking every pocket, and you've got your keys maybe, but you realize you don't have your phone. And at this point, my phone was like my camera, it was my lifeline, I had no idea where I was in the world, but I had my phone, or so I thought. And, uh, And when I realized that I didn't have it, I kind of just this overwhelming sense of dread in this crowd of a few thousand people that I was never finding that phone again. And so I told my friends, none of whom were Christian, and I was very new to this whole faith thing, and I stood there and said to my friends, just give me one second. And I closed my eyes, and I remember some of my friends saying, you know, if you pray, sometimes God answers. And so in the middle of the street, I was like, why not? I stood there and I was like, oh God, can you... Can you give me my phone back, please? <laughs> An honest prayer of a drowning woman. And <laughs> so meanwhile, whilst my eyes were closed and I was trying to pray or something, my friend Steph, who wasn't a Christian, got a jog on and she ran back a few kilometers to try and find my phone for me. She was asking tens of people, like, have you seen Jodie's phone? And I was just stood there looking like a bit of a melt, waiting, really. And uh, as she came back, she handed me my phone against all odds. It was amazing. And I went up to a bunch of my friends later that evening, one of whom had invited me to Alpha. And I said, mate, I've got the biggest testimony of God's provision. God found my phone. (laughs) And Steph, my friend, looked at me, was like, what are you talking about? God didn't find your phone. I found your phone. (laughs) And she was so offended and thought I was totally, totally weird. I probably am. But people aren't an added bonus. God gives us people to answer our prayers. And we need to allow them to. We need people to hold us up when we can't grip on any longer. We need people to speak truth over us. We need people to find our phones. We need people to drag us out of the house when it is hard. To help raise our kids and tell us it is going to be okay. We need each other. So speak out. Speak to God, cry to him, be honest, he will listen. Speak with someone, a friend, maybe a group leader, or one of the team here, if you're feeling particularly isolated at the moment, speak out. The second thing is to look up. Despite his circumstances, despite the surroundings in the belly of a fish, instead of focusing on the gross stuff and the darkness around him, Jonah looks to God. Verse four, it says, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. Jonah chooses to focus on God again, to focus on his unwavering character. And when we're in the belly, we need to choose to focus on God. Psalm 21 says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from God. And this is what happens when we worship, crying out, Lord, I need you. In the belly of the fish, in the pit of my life, God, I need you. We look up from our circumstances and we look to God's character as we sing those truths, that God is loving, he is gracious, he is merciful, he is slow to anger, he is abounding in faithfulness and he is with us. He has a plan for our lives and he is stronger than it all. Worship is a shift of our attention. It's like a corrective lens for our souls. It's important to do, it's hard to do, but it's important to do when our lives get hard. Whatever we're going through, no matter how far we are from God, God is calling us home. We can never fall too far for God to reach you. And we heard from Stephen last week that there is nowhere we can go to escape God's mercy. Not even Milton Keynes. 
And in this passage, we find Jonah speaking out of thanksgiving. He's praising God in the midst of the depths. He's not ignoring it. He's not papering over the cracks of his life. But he is choosing to be honest and to look to God. So, the third thing is to hold on. As Jonah sat there in the fish, what would he hold on to? He's got a question. Where would he put his trust? All of the superficial things of his life had been taken away, and Jonah realizes that instead of holding on to God, he has been holding on to other things. Perhaps his own plans for his life, his intellect, his own decision-making. But in a rare moment of self-awareness, Jonah says, those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Or in another version, it says, those who cling to worthless idols, they forfeit the grace that could be theirs. What are you holding on to today? There are so many things that fight for our time, our affection, and our attention. Like the seaweed wrapping around Jonah's head, they can almost blind us. Where do we find our identity, our trust? Is it in our salary or our paycheck? Our followers on Instagram, the clothes we wear, the people we socialize with? If we're not careful, these things can distract us and distance us from God, put a barrier between us and our spiritual journey. I used to idolize football, and if not football, then the party lifestyle that preceded it. And if not that, then status and social standings. But when I realized what I was doing, I realized that football wasn't going to save me when I was going down into the pit. Social status isn't going to be able to save me when I'm heading downwards. My next night out won't be able to save me when I am in the thick of it. But sometimes it's when we reach the bottom, when all else is taken away from us, that it's here when we are dependent on God. When all else has been taken from our grip, we can finally hold on to God. We don't realize that Jesus is all we need until Jesus is all that we have. In everything, God wants us to hold on to him. God wants us to learn how to trust him completely. And if you're struggling today with this, spend some time in the Psalms or go back to Simon's talk from New Year's Day where he looked at holding on to the one who holds us. He spoke about Psalm 63 saying, I cling to you, your right hand upholds me. Don't cling on to the worthless things of this world that will drop us in an instant. Cling on to the one who holds you, the one whose grasp will never be prized open, the one who tenderly holds you in the very hands that he used to form you. Jesus will never let go of you. And so when we feel far away, speak out, look up, hold on, and finally, think back. Jonah takes time in the midst of his difficult circumstances to look back and to remember what God has done for him. In verses six and seven, it says, to the roots of the mountains I sank down, the earth barred me in forever, but you, Lord my God, brought me up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to the holy temple. However far you might be feeling from God today, however steep you've sunk, there is hope. And in many ways, Jonah's story is all of our stories, not necessarily in the circumstances or in our personality traits, but at one time, we were all distant from God. And maybe that's you today. You're like, well, actually, I'm still distant from God. I'm not even sure God exists. And that is okay. Whatever reason you find yourself here, I'm glad you're here today. And if you're up for it, I'd recommend coming along on Alpha, just exploring, like, what is it that these guys are talking about? Is there really hope in the midst of life's darkness? Come, ask your questions. And because I realize that God is far more than a self-help book. He's far more than just a crutch. But famously, Bear Grylls' adventurer says, some might call faith a crutch, but what does a crutch do? It helps us stand up, and it gives us a weapon when we need to fight. So sure, I could use a crutch every so often. And so if you need a crutch, come to God. 
We all need God's grace like Jonah. We're unable to save ourselves, seemingly with no hope of rescue. But similar to this story, God came through with a rescue plan. But instead of a giant fish that was gonna swallow him up, it was in the form of a humble man. God came to us in the form of Jesus. And Paul says, now you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of the Jesus, uh, blood of Jesus. On the cross as Jesus died, darkness fell. And he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus himself experienced what it was to be far from God so that we don't have to. He was separated from his Father in heaven so that we could be filled with him. This is the good news. This is the message of hope that we have. And it's too good to hold on to ourselves. Whatever we're experiencing, whatever we're facing, This is the message for us personally, intimately today, but it's also the hope for Oxford, the hope for the UK, the hope for our world, and this is why we're doing all that we're doing. Because we fully believe with everything that we have, however hard life might seem, however far we have turned from God, he listens, he turns to us, he remembers us, and he runs to us because of what Jesus has done. And the prayer finishes up with Jonah saying, I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah out onto dry land. And so ultimately, though there are things that we can do when God feels far or we feel low, there is hope for us all today, not because of what we do or how good we are or how hard we try, but because salvation comes from the Lord. He is compassionate and gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. And he is the one who came close. He is closer to us all than the very breath that we breathe. And Jonah shows us that no matter who we are, no matter how far we run, no matter how deep we go, there is a God who loves us and is here with us. He's with us in the depths, and one day, whether in this life or when he returns, he will deliver us from all of our struggles. There is hope. And so as we come to communion now, Let's remember to speak out, to look up, to hold on, and to think back, to look back and remember all of what God has done so we can hope in him. And so when God feels far and we feel down, he is with us. Amen.